Hi, welcome to today's teachable moment where we will talk about Hilda, um, who is an amazing woman. She lived in 7th century England, and there she lived. She was she lived and died. She was a holy woman. She was royal. She was devout. And she was a prudent English nun. She lived the last half of her life in Whitby, a town on the east coast of Yorkshire on the North Sea. What we do know about this extraordinary woman was written by her contemporary, a very famous gentleman referred to as the Venerable Bede, who wrote the ecclesiastical history of the English people. He wrote of her, all who know Abbess Hilda, the servant of Christ, called her mother because of her wonderful devotion and grace. What a wonderful legacy to have written about you. Hilda was born into a royal family in Northumbria, the very north of England, in 614 AD, where she lived a quiet life, a very devoted life, and she lived at the king's court until she turned 33 years old, at which point she decided to become a nun. Bishop Aidan, who uh, was very impressed with her holiness, and he appointed her as Bishop of Hartlepool, also a northern town on the east coast of the northern part of England. He established a rule of life, or she established a rule of life based on what she had been taught. And so she was asked to renew the community nearby. Having done a brilliant job of that, in 657 AD, she moved to Whitby. Whitby was already a monastery and it included a household of nuns. With, uh, with Hilda at the helm, however, Whitby became the most famous religious community in all of England because of her love of justice, devotion, charity, peace, and chastity. According to Bede, she was so prudent that not only ordinary people, but kings and princes as well, asked her for her advice, which she graciously gave it to them. She required that those under her direction devote themselves to the study of scripture as well as requiring good works. I admire the fact that she balanced her life in that way and that she required this same balance in the lives of her monks and nuns. Whitby was very prestigious and was therefore selected as the venue of the famous Synod of Whitby, which was the first synod of the church in England. How we now calculate the exact date of Easter was established during this synod. Now synods are councils of a church um, that's usually gathered together to decide on an important issue of doctrine or administration. There are two legends attached to Hilda's name, which always amuse me. I will read to you from our friend Wikipedia regarding these legends. Local legend says that when seabirds fly over the abbey, they dip their wings in honor of St. Hilda. Another legend tells of the plague of snakes, which Hilda turned into stone, supposedly explaining the presence of ammonite fossils on the shore. Ammonite fossils are fossils of mollusks that are now extinct. The he um, heads were carved into these petrified snakes to honor this legend. It was not unknown for local artisans to carve snakes' heads into the ammonites and these would sell as relics, as proof of her miracle. The coat of arms of nearby Whitby includes three such snake stones, and uh, um, de depictions of ammonites appear in the shield at the University of Durham's College of St. Hilda and St. Bede. A carved ammonite stone is set into the wall by an entrance to the former chapel of St. Hilda's College in Durham, which later became part of the College of St. Hild and St. Bede. In this season of gratefulness, we give thanks for Hilda today. 
She died in 680, surrounded by her faithful nuns and monks. She used her gifts of holiness and wisdom to nurture the same in others so that they could serve Christ by serving his people. She made 7th century England a household of God. Thanks for joining me.